Hey guys, it's Danny here, and I'm back with another episode of The Sad Story of Evelyn Burns. I actually really like this the first time. It's a lot more interesting than I thought it would be. And they're so cute. They're like little dolls. Of course, like, doll from the past, Emmeline. And then Toma, a doll from the present. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm excited. I glance at a nearby grave, that of an Elijah or Al Alicia Pharaoh. Somebody has scrawled across the top of the top of it in black marker pen. God is dead. It seemed we have a Bansky of our own living in Barbie. Who would have thought? And I like thinking of stories too. Stories. Yes, graves are small, and the people buried underneath underneath them are turned into names and dates, nothing more. I think there must be more to these people than that, though. What were their parents like? Did they have, have any siblings? What was their job? Were they happy? What about all the people they met whose lives they ha may have changed without them even realizing it? I don't know about all those things, I never will. It's fascinating, but at the same time, it's a little sad. I blush, my hands hang limply at my sides. Did I say too much? I think I might have, have said too much. And I'm sorry if I stutter. Um, I'm not always the best at talking out loud because I do stutter sometimes and like, go off topic, <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying my best, I hope I'm getting better, I probably am, because like, the last time was like, really bad, <laughs> this is why I don't talk to people at school, other than Hattie, it's because I'm weird, and I know my fellow classmates, Emily Hargreaves and Emily Turner included, would just laugh at me, or maybe Amelia wouldn't. Amelia's too nice to laugh at anybody. Th that's what I think. Anyway, it's probably it probably sounds stupid though. No, I think you made some good points. Uh, I did. Yes, every person has a story, and there is it's not enough space on a single tombstone to tell it. The sad truth is, there are so many people in this world, it is not possible to remember every single story. As the years go by, they fall by the wayside. The dead must always concede to the whims of the living, even in places like these. This. Not these. Like this. Oh, her name is- did she- I can't remember she said her name was Emmeline? Or Emily. Mm, I, 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 don't, I don't remember. But we're going to call her Emily because that's what it says. Right here. <laughs> anyway. Emily looks back at Elijah or Alicia. Sarah's grave. Decorated with the abiding political commentary, God is dead, and sighs. I like thinking of stories too. In fact, I could tell you a story of my own. I have been turning it over in my head for quite some time, and I I would be intrigued to hear your response. I, I, I wouldn't mind. Are you quite sure? I don't want to bore you. I can't remember the last time anybody wanted to hear what I had to say. N no, I'm quite sure. I would love to. There's nothing else I wanted to do here anyway. Nothing other than wander, trying to avoid thinking about school next Monday, and how much trouble I'll be in when it's discovered. I've been playing 
Trot? 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 I don't know. I always run away from my problems. I have done ever since I was a child. I must have inherited that admirable trait from my dad. Well then, if you want to, follow me. I love the sound effects. Like, it actually has the sound effects of footsteps. Which is really good. Because, like, sometimes, like, they don't add that. And it kind of, like, this kind of, like, makes it, should I say, makes it more realistic? Um, no, it, ma it makes it, it makes me believe that it's actually happening and that this isn't just a game. It's actually telling a story. Which I get, which it is. But yes, come on, let's continue. Emily turns, her hair fluttering, and slips through the graveyard like a shadow. Ooh, cool. I follow her, curious yet cautious, as she leads me behind the church, where the trees are thicker and there are even more graves. She draws my attention to a tombstone. Just one tombstone of many. It jets out of the grass like a tooth from my gum, slightly crooked. A few cracks run down its gray sides, and on top of the grave is fringed with pale yellow. Lichen? Lichen? I think I think it's like Lichen? Lichen? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not the best at pronouncing words. The name engraved into the tombstone is a little difficult to see, impressed only shallowly, and I have to strain my eyes to to read it through the fog. I didn't explore the graveyards of Lincolnshire in my youth for nothing, though, and I'm more skilled than most teenagers when it comes to reading inscriptions on gravestones. Philip Burns. <gasps> Here lies the body of Philip Burns, 1807-1851. Also, Peditra Burns, wife of the above, 1811-1851. Also, Emmeline Burns, their beloved daughter, 1836 through 1851 may their souls rest in peace wow this is she's born with her parents i don't know if that's like if her parents were like good people so i don't know let's hope that they were good people and that they loved her very well I shift, suddenly uncomfortable. Graveyards don't usually make me uncomfortable, but there's something about this tombstone that strikes a discordant note with me, within me. Something here just isn't right. They all died in, in the same year. They did indeed, and in all on the same day, too. I turn away from the grave, the final remnant of the unfortunate Burns family, and bite my lip, lower lip. When I speak next, when I next speak, my voice is barely a whisper, even quieter than the wind. How do you know that? It's just a story. I already told you that. Uh, I suppose so, but... But when Emily said it, it didn't sound like a story. She sounded deadly serious. She looks serious, too. Her eyes are narrowed. Her lips are pierced. Pursed? Pursed? Yeah, pursed. Her face stark white, as though cra crate carved, carved from stone. The fog swirls about us like a veil. It's even thicker than it was earlier this morning. I can taste the fog at the back of my throat when I inhale, and I cough. It tastes cold, rank, and repulsive. The taste of death. Just who is Emily anyway? She doesn't look like any girl I know. She doesn't act like any girl I know. 
It's all I'm almost tempted to believe, but that would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? So, should I tell you my story? I must warn you, though. It's rather do 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 door door ha. Huh? Um, Dior? Then again, given our setting, what kind of what other kind of story could it be? You should already know how it ends. Death. Oh. Oh, cool. Evelyn Bourne. Bo Evelyn Bourne's. Ha <laughs> ha. Evelyn Bourne's born in <laughs> 1836. No. Evelyn Burns, born in 1836, to Philip and Perditra Burns. Led a charmed life. Her family was rather well to do. Her grandfather being a lawyer, her father a banker, and she grew up in a large house with five bedrooms on the outskirts of Barrowby. Given her father's profession, he was often away in Lo in London on business. Oh, so so this is close to London. Okay. But this did not upset Emmeline. She was old enough to understand that her father needed to work so they could afford her nice house and her fine clothes and the ribbons she wore in her hair. So she did not complain, though she did not see her father for months at a time. When he returned home, it was always with a present for Emmeline and a kiss on her cheek, and it was as though he had never been away at all. Philip was a kind man, though he may not have been a paragon of many manly virtues. He's the runt of the litter. If he were a pig, we would have drowned him in the well. Grandmother Patience always griped. He was not naturally predisposed to predisposed to the world of financing, but he did have a good head on his shoulders, and he was relatively intelligent. Not even Grandmother Patience could deny that. <gasps> okay. Grandmother Patience. Why, why does it, uh, was that one of, like, Thomas' ancestors or something like that? I can't remember. I don't remember. But yeah, I I feel like things are gonna get really intense and scary. But yeah, let's continue. It was though his quick wits, rather than his magnetic charisma, of which he was so sorely lacking, that Philip had been. Had been able to expand upon the Burns family f family's fortune, as he had invented a good deal of their money into the stock market. Ellen really did love her father, despite his lack of presence in her life, or maybe because of it. They do say, after all, the absence makes the heart grow fonder. S it depends on some cases. Yeah, it depends. Let's just say that. Even when Philip was not at home, Emmeline had a great deal to busy herself with. And she was never bored or lonely. She would help her mother with her embroidery, or exchange idle gossip with the servants, or go for long walks about the countryside, eating blackberries from the hedgerows and snagging her dress on brambles hedgerows and brambles uh, I'm guessing hedgerows is hedges and then brambles is like branches of sticks I don't know Evelyn's long-suffering governess Helena Warren certainly her hands full <laughs> Certainly had her hands full when it came to disciplining her rowdy pupil. Oh, that that was that must be um her her like tutor. Though Evelyn was not intelligent, she had been born with the disposition 
of a sea captain or a polar explorer, and she was physically incapable of sitting still for five minutes. <laughs> kind of, she kind of reminds me of me, like in that aspect. Ex well, I can sit. It's either I gotta move around and like stuff like that. Or I'm sitting on my butt playing on my computer. <laughs> it's, it's either one of the two. Or watching videos on my phone. <laughs> that is, unless she was with... No. Coralia Lenten. Is it, no, is that her tutor? I can't remember. Is either Helena or Coralina? Evelyn and Corlina had known one another since they were both babies, and they were almost inseparable. They spent most of their waking hours together, sitting by the lakeside in the Lenten's private estate. They would stare out across the untroubled waters, which carried along with its lily pads, reeds, and fish, fish with shimmering scales, and they wouldn't talk, and they would talk, sipping raspberry lemonade. Everyone in Barby knew that the lake in the Lenten's estate belonged to Cor Cornelia, oh, Cornelia, Cornelia, okay, that's her name, not Cor- Corn Cornelia, 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 that the Lintons estate belonged to Cornelia and Emmeline. They had claimed it though the countless, through the countless hours they had, they had wild away by those grassy banks, feeding the fish and dipping their bare toes into the water. The lake was their private land, a secret garden everyone knew of, but nobody would intrude upon. And so it was that it was that Emmeline and Cornelia spent the summer months together basking under the sunshine. <gasps> oh my gosh, that girl like she, that girl looks like a girl kind of looks like Toma. But doesn't okay, but Toma has more purple eyes. And look, it's it's Emily or Emmeline. Ah, <sighs> so pretty. They're both such pretty dolls. Ah. Oh. It's so beautiful. I love this. I love how like this art style. It's very beautiful. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. I thought my mom came home and that she was gonna walk through the door, like yelling or something. So, how is your embroidery coming along? Cornelia pouted, giving Evelyn a light shove in the shoulder. Oh, please, do not ask me about my embroidery. You know better than anyone how dreadful I am at it. I have no hand-eye coordination whatsoever. Evelyn giggled, returning Cornelia's shove with one of her own. I do not understand how you can be that terrible at sewing, Nelly. Oh, that's so cute, Nelly. It is hardly a science. Yeah, embroidery isn't a science, but you got to do you do have to be careful when sewing. Because I've stabbed my finger multiple times with a needle before and it is not fun because, you know, it's a needle and it hurts. And I do have a sewing machine. This scares the freak out of me. 
I was about to say the F word. It's like, this is a family friendly channel. <laughs> But yeah, but yeah, you do have to be careful when sewing. If any of you guys sew, it's like you understand that it hurts when you stab your finger. It may be simple for you, but it's not so for me. Engaging in an activity I have no talent for is incredibly disheartening, and I keep poking myself with the needle. Exactly. It hurts. Ooh, let me see. What? No! Cornelia pouts deepened. Con yeah, Cornelia's pout deepened, and she held her hands behind her back, attempting to hide them. Why do you want to see my hands anyway? Do you want to gloat? Me? Gloat? I would never. I just want to see the wounds that have been dealt to you despite your best efforts, my dear Cornelia. It's kind of like they're in love. Actually, they might be, because like, they love each other like sisters. Which is cute, because like, it's sweet. So, um, my dear Cornelia. So I may applaud you for your bravery. Hmm. Forgive me for being so cynical, but I suspect you may be making fun of me. Of course I will forgive you. You can't help your cynical cynicism. Cynicism? I don't know. Given your father fancies himself as a philosopher. Ooh, cool. I forgot what a philosopher is. I don't know. It must run in your family. Indeed, he does. Our library is full of Hegel and Kant. Kant? Or Kant? I don't know. Though I doubt he understands it. Mother says he just wants to show off at dinner parties. How is he able to show off if he cannot understand the material he speaks of? It's nothing more than blu than bluster. Mother says pretense is one of the key traits a man must possess if he wishes to, to be successful in this world. My father is an earnest man. He could not lie if his life depended on it, especially not about philosophy. And that is why your my mother worries about you, Emmeline. She had said as much before. She need not concern herself with my family. We may not be as rich as you, but what we lack in wealth we make up for with raw talent. Uh, are you saying I have no talent? I am I am saying it is somewhat sad that a 14 year old girl such as yourself so, still can't sew a single comforter. Oh cool, I'm also 14. I'm turning 15 this month. Nice. Hey! Cornelia, who had let her guard slip as she pondered her father's ill-fated attempts to integrate himself with the intellig intelligestia of the age, tried to obscure her hands behind her back once more, but it was already too late. Aw, cute. What? What? Oh. <laughs> What are you doing, Emmy? Oh, Emmy! I'm sorry, their nicknames are so cute. I'm examining your hands. As I said I would. And, oh dear. Evelyn tooted and shook her head, her fingers linked together with Cornelia's. I seriously, I seriously think that they, like, might be in love. They are such beautiful hands with so much silk, smooth skin. I was say silk skin. Yeah. Your skin can be as smooth as silk. Well, can it? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, with so much smooth skin, yet they are marked all over with red dots. It appears as though you have been used as a human pin cushion. 
I'm sorry if I mess up on words. I'm not the greatest at speaking, like I said before. <laughs> I already told you, Emmy. I have no skills when it comes to sewing. Why do you- why must you tease me so? I was not teasing you. I was honoring your efforts. That that is a bald. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was a bald faced lie, and we both know it. <laughs> <laughs> if you had an ounce of respect for me, you would not be smiling like that. Like what? Like that. Now let go of me. Oh, they're so cute. But Emmeline did not. Instead, she continued to stand there, skirts fluttering about her legs, attempting to peer into Cornelia's grumpy little face with undisguised amusement. I mean, I told you to let me to let go. Why, why do you never listen to me? I wonder who's older. Is Emmy older or is Nellie older? I don't know. They might be the same age. But still, one of them has to be older, you know, because, like, one's older maybe by a few months. Ugh, look at their beautiful curls. They almost have the same hairstyle. Almost. But, Emmy has bangs, and her hair is light brown. And then, Cornelia's hair is white? It's either white or like a really, really light brown. Actually, she might be blonde. Yeah, she might be blonde. Just like a really light blonde. And then she has like the middle part. Which is super cute. <laughs> because seeing you blush is so much fun, of course. See? They're... They love each other. That's pure love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Emmy, if Cornelia had the use of both her hands, perhaps she would have struck the top of Emmeline's head for her insolence. As it was, she did not. All she could do was glare, glare and blush. Cornelia blushed a lot. That was one of her da of the downsides of having such fair skin. That and when she poked herself with, with the sewing needle, as she was so prone to doing, the red walls that resulted stood out sharply, stalkly against her milky complexion. Yeah, they're really pale. Why are you, why are you acting so coy, Nellie? I know you enjoy my company, really. I, be that as it may, you are behaving rather childish childishly right now and I have no desire to indulge your whims honestly honestly even if those whims are your own as well well Cornelia let her head hang her face turning just a shade darker this was not the first time that the two girls had held hands they have been friends ever since they were small and they were not unfamiliar with the sensation of of the other skin. Okay, I would just like to say if they had the opportunity to grow up, they probably would have fell in love with each other. Because like they're already really close. And like they seem to connect well. So it's like, if they were in this timeline, and they wanted to, like, date or, like, get married, I would be, uh, I would, oh, my elbow, mm, I hit my elbow, that hurt, ow, stupid couch. Oh yeah, I'm sitting on the floor in my living room. <laughs> Cause no one's home and all the boys in the house are upstairs playing their games or talking on the phone. 
So yeah, I have uh, the downstairs all to myself, except for, of course, the animals. But yeah, they freaking hurt. But yeah, I would approve if they wa if they wanted to get married. Ten out of ten, because they're both pretty beautiful dolls. <laughs> In fact, they were more well versed with one another's bodies than one might have expected. See. <laughs> Though their mothers would have scolded them for the unladylike manner with which they co comported themselves when left alone by the lakeside, they would have been scandalized to learn of the other more intimate actions that had taken place between the two girls. <gasps> what? Okay. Yeah, they're in love. I'm gonna just say it right then and there. They're in love. They love each other. It had only been a month or so ago when, drunk on the lazy heat of the encroaching summer, the two girls had slowly lack lack basically shared their first kiss, not a kiss on the cheek or or the temple, as they had done during their babyhood, but a true kiss typically shared between adults of the opposite sex. Yes, like a kiss on the lips. Oh my gosh. I ship it! I ship it! Oh my gosh! I'm sorry, I'm getting like all fangirly. That is beautiful. I, yes. Yes! Go girls! Forget gender roles. <laughs> you can be together all you want. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it. Cause like in mo in some game, mm, well, how shall I put this? In most of the, okay. So I'm gonna just say this. I play a lot of dating games, okay? Because I'm lonely and bored. Most of the, most of the characters in dating games are guys and most of the, there's not many girls girl characters that get together oh yeah you you guys should totally check out Athmo Sh she's pretty cool I really like her channel go check her out 10 out of 10 I love Athmo's content but that's besides the point <laughs> But uh, hmm. But yeah, like I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> but yeah, I ship it. I oh my gosh, this is so cute. I'm sorry, I'm like fangirling. It's like so adorable. <laughs> neither of them knew. Neither of them knew who had instigated the kiss or why they had lingered for so long in such a manner their lips pressed together but both agreed after the fact that they liked it <laughs> i'm probably getting red right now oh my gosh <laughs> it had just felt right maybe they're soulmates <gasps> oh my gosh they're soulmates sorry <laughs> as such without giving these moments of intimacy too much thought the two girls had continued to display their affections for one another in such a manner all through the summer of 1851 that was the dear year that Amelia died Emmeline Emmeline yeah Emmeline no Emmeline yes her name's Emmeline not Amelia did I say Amelia? I don't remember. But yeah, that was the year that Emmeline died. Hmm. It may have been uncommon for two women to exchange such kisses and caresses, 
But what of it? Why should they not kiss one another if they wanted to? The lakeside was their own private haunt, their secret garden, and nothing could intrude upon them there. Not even even so-called common decency. Oh snap, did they do it? I'm curious now. That was another question. Why should it be indecent? Evelyn did not understand. She loved Cornelia and Cornelia loved her. And was that- Ow! I just put this out of my mouth. And was that not enough? Even if it was not enough for the rest of the world, it was more than enough for her. Oh my gosh! I'm sorry. It's just like... So beautiful. You know, you really are beautiful. Do, do you honestly think so? Of course, I thought so. For the, From the moment I was old enough to understand what beauty is, you are one of the loveliest people I have ever seen. You know what? I'm going to end it right here. Okay? I'm going to end it right here. I love this. I love this so much. I'm at... Oh my gosh. Well, it's obvious that Evelyn dies this year, so I'm not looking forward to that part. Um, oh, wow. 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 Okay. Evelyn does not des deserve to die. Things might change. Uh, she might have done something really bad. Not by society standards of bad, like, you know, dating a woman back then. But now, it's like, it's, it's, now you can, you can, like, date a woman and not, you can date the same sex as you and not be, like, judged by everyone you know like sure some people will judge you but like how should i put this hmm like, I know some people that would not approve of their relationship because they are from the same sex. Like, they are both women. Or, like, say they were two guys because they're two guys. Like, some people do not approve of it. And their parents probably wouldn't approve of this. But they're in their, like... They're in their own little world when they're by the lakeside. It's their secret garden. It's where they can enjoy e each other's company without being judged. I am sorry. I'm just like... <laughs> yes, when I see beautiful relationships like this and hot anime guys, I fangirl. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> uh, but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this episode I definitely I definitely did um yeah wow wow I love this I'm gonna just say it like that I absolutely loved this. This was like, this was like so beautiful. This is a beautiful relationship. I support it 100%. Of course, like, you know, they can't have kids because they're, they don't have the reproductive organs to do that. Well, one of them doesn't have the reproductive organs to do that. 
since they're both women, you know. But still, I I really approve. I oh my god. You know what I just realized? Maybe Toma is Cornelia's, like, descendant. Should I say that? Yeah, descendant. Like, Cornelia is one of Toma's ancestors. I'm oh, sorry, I'm just like... This makes me so happy. Because you don't see many same-sex relationships. And I just... <laughs> I'm sorry. I was looking at the um there's lizards um in one of the in a in one of the it's, there's lizards in the room and one was just standing on the other messing with the light in their cage. Well, I should say Dragons actually because they're dragons Rawr! But yeah, they don't really do much We got three dragons two are adults one's a baby. It is not their baby Yeah But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed I really enjoyed this episode. I am so happy for them. It's like <sighs> Yes! I love it. I love their relationship. It's so beautiful. They're so beautiful. You guys are beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed. That's it for now. Bye-bye!